So what's wrong with this picture? We're now learning that the U.S. Strategic Command hosted a former Iranian official to headline a 2023 symposium, even though he kept close ties with the Iranian regime and once appeared to mock the fears of Americans who were worried about getting killed by Iranian hit teams. Joining me now to talk about it is John Ratcliffe, former director of national intelligence. Uh, John, what do you make of this? Well, it's an abomination, uh, David. What I would hope uh, that when uh, Congress returns in September, um, that uh, the Armed Forces, uh, Armed Services Committee in, in Congress will bring in the head of U.S. Uh, Strategic Command, which is, is one of the combatant commands that's responsible for nuclear deterrence. And, and the head of that is an Air Force general uh, named Anthony Cotton. And I would hope that General Cotton will be brought in uh, to try and give uh, some explanation to what is indefensible. I mean, uh, as you pointed out, uh, David, uh, for Strategic Command to host a, a symposium and to invite um, Hussein Musavian, who is a very bad guy, uh, who is a member of the Iranian um, negotiating team for the Iranian nuclear deal and is a propagandist for the Iranian regime, a murderous regime, and even for the terrorist organization, the IRGC. And as you said, cheered the IRGC efforts um, uh, to assassinate former Trump campaign officials. So, I mean, there's, there, there's no explanation for this, David. Think about the lunacy of this, that the United States government paying for se Secret Service security details for officials like Mike Pompeo and others who have been threatened by this regime, and at the very same time, the U.S. government, through strategic command, um, inviting uh, those responsible for making those threats and cheering on those threats to be their keynote speaker. It, it's, it's absolutely uh, indefensible, uh, and Congress should demand an explanation. Well, I, I want to I read their uh, defense of all this in, in a moment. But first, just to, to be a little more specific about this guy, he's, he, by the way, is a visiting research scholar at Princeton University. Uh, he holds the bank of ambassador. I think he was ambassador to Germany. Uh, it was a documentary in Farsi uh, in which he seemed to be mocking the fears of, of the wife of Brian Hook. He was Trump's special envoy for Iran. I don't know if you know Brian Hook, but uh, that's who I do. He, he, I know. He, he was appearing to mock the fears that his wife had after the killing, after the assassination of Soleimani, the, the, the Iranian terrorist by the Trump administration. Go ahead. Well, uh, uh, it, there were multiple U.S. officials uh, from, from our administration who have been threatened and who are receiving Secret, uh, Secret Service protection for those threats. And so for the government to invite that person who yeah. is, um, you know, supportive of those, uh, uh, of, of those uh, efforts uh, as a keynote speaker is, is indefensible. I mean, you know, it, it'd be no different uh, than inviting, uh, you know, ISIS or Al Qaeda uh, field commanders to come to a, a Department of Defense symposium on, on fighting Islamist uh, extremism. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's, it's beyond absurd. And I would hope that, um, you know, the next uh, president will look at who's in these important positions uh, within our yeah. military that are making decisions like this that are really projecting not just weakness, but harming our national security posture by taking this approach. Well, let, let me just read this, uh, the Strategic Command's uh, excuse or apologia for this. They say, quote, we always seek in our panelists and speakers a broad array of perspectives, including those which differ from our own. We were aware of Mr. Musavian's previous position with the, within the Iranian government and believe that in the context of the deterrence symposium, we would have benefited from the insight into an opposing viewpoint. Uh, you know, you, you, you want to know your enemy. There's no question about it. But you don't want to let the, the fox into the hen house. And that's what a lot of people say was being done here. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're giving a, a platform uh, to a guy who has made uh, anti-American statements, anti-Semitic statements, um, you know, is very clearly uh, opposed to our national security interests. And like I said, that, that explanation or excuse, you know, uh, again, would, would allow or justify inviting, uh, you know, uh, Al Qaeda and ISIS leaders to, uh, to give their perspectives because it's a different uh, perspective. We should not be giving a platform to um, those that cheer designated terrorists uh, to our uh, military symposiums. It's just, 
Yeah. There's no good explanation and it, it for it this, also David. leads to questions about the naivete of the Biden administration and their position with regard to Iran, and, and the big question of whether they're going to go through another exercise of, of another Iranian nuclear deer, deal. What do you think? Well, and that, well, and that, 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 you'd ask yourself why. Why would they do this, David? And, 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 and that is the answer is, um, you know, the Biden administration and the, this murderous Iranian regime and this terror, uh, terrorist organization, the IRGC, designated terrorists, they do share a, a common goal, and that is to rehabilitate uh, an Iranian nuclear deal that helps Iran and that hurts Israel. And, you know, this goes back to uh, the Biden Obama, uh, the, the Obama Biden administration, and now carried forward in the Biden administration with, with really not treating uh, Israel as what they are, our most strategic and important ally in, in the Middle East, the most volatile, uh, mm -hmm. you know, historically the most volatile region in the world. And you, you mentioned Israel, which of course is our, is our longest ally in the Middle East, but, but think of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, uh, both of which historically have been kind of the enemies of Iran. It's a different kind of, of Islam. And, and now you have the possibility of a deal between the Saudi Arabians and the Iranians because, because of the fact that the Saudis are so worried about us and whether we are reliable partners. Well, they were called pariahs on the very first day, uh, you know, of the Biden administration. And, uh, you know, the momentum from the Abraham Accords that should have led to Saudi Arabia being the next one to normalize yeah. relations with Israel uh, was quickly put to death by the Biden administration and taken no efforts to to advance uh, those types of efforts. And as a result, we, we see, you know, uh, a hegemonic Iran getting stronger in the Middle East, which is absolutely counter to, uh, you know, America's national security posture in that region. And no one can dispute that, David. Very no worrisome. One. John Radcliffe, good to see you, John. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You, 